The scripture lesson for this morning uh, from the Old Testament is Psalm 117. And I'm going to read the whole thing. Are you ready? Wow. Uh, 117. 117, the whole thing. Praise the Lord, all ye nations, extol him, all ye peoples. For great is his love toward us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. Amen. Okay. 117 is the shortest of the Psalms. If I ever come to do 119, we're going to lock the doors before I do it because that is the longest one. So we're going to go to the New Testament, the Revelation 22, verses 12 through 21. Behold, I am coming soon. My reward is with me. I will give to everyone according to what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes that they may have the right to the tree of life and may go through the gates into the city. Outside are dogs, those who practice magic arts, the sexually immoral, the murderers, the idolaters, and everyone who loves practices and falsehood. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come, let us, let him who hears us say, come, whoever is thirsty, let him come, and whoever wishes, let him take the free gift of the water of life. I warn you that everyone who hears the words and prophecies of this book, if anyone adds anything to them, God will add to him the plagues described in this book. And if anyone takes any words away from this book of prophecy, God will take away from him his share in the tree of life and in the holy city, which are described in this book. He who testifies to these things says, yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus, come. In the grace of the Lord Jesus, we would love God's people. Amen and amen. Here ends the scripture readings for the morning. Well, one of the first things that should be said is Happy New Year. Uh, for those uh, who haven't seen each other since last year, and there were several because you've been away or you were not able for various reasons to come. And uh, this is uh, a good time, a good way to start a new year is in God's house. Anytime it's going to be in his house. <laughs> um, the uh, Christmas season, of course, is over. There are a bunch of people who say, uh, they wish that there was a greater time span between Christmas and New Year's. Well, that's not a lot to do with commercialism, I'm sure. But remember, there is a time span between Christmas and New Year's. It's known as a month, a year, 12 months together. January is a new year, and December is 12 months down the pike. Uh, however, as we know, they do come back to back, and that gives a lot of people problems. So... We'll just keep going as best we can. Remember that uh, the calendar is separating things. Of course, if I had my way, I'd move New Year's into springtime. So when you get up in the morning, you could see new grass and flowers, a new sign of life. But uh, nobody asked me, so I wasn't in the planning stage. Although some people think I've been around long enough. So there you go. Um, I've entitled today's message, A New Journey. And the word journey is uh, not one we hear very much about anymore. Uh, it's been replaced by the more familiar, oh, I'm going to drive to Florida, or, oh, I'm going to go to some other destination. Um, I'll be going to the West Coast if the airlines don't cancel, or maybe I'll take a walk from my house to the mall and see about doing some shopping and look around. Or well, my family and I are going on a tour of 
historical places, et cetera, et cetera. You can each add your own way version of all those things, but don't forget, you might want to sail on a cruise sometime too. However, for today's purposes, let's just think about this brand new year. It began at midnight a week ago, and so uh, we hardly started. Our new journey for 2023 is about to be discovering a way, it should be to discovering a way to uh, encounter Jesus and to be with him, to travel with him as God's son and as God's representative here on earth. Now, I have a Bible, and if you don't have one, I would ask you uh, to tell me if you want one, I will give you one. I went to a mayor and council meeting in May with the other day. Fortunately, for whatever reason, I brought the Bible in with me. I don't know if boroughs normally have a Bible or not, but the one I brought in was used so that the person who was being taking the oath for the new council uh, term uh, used it, and they used it in a couple of other things that night. And I, they said, where'd you get that? I said, I have that with me. I always have one in the car. And I thought that it might be appropriate to bring it in because I didn't know if the borough had one or not. I still don't, but I'll check it out. If they don't, you know they're going to get one. And I'll tell them to put it in a safe place or to keep it out where people can look at it. And that might rattle a few slats. But that's the way it is. Um, the uh, thing about life and this new journey uh, is something that we have to give some really serious thought about. You might think of your life as ordinary or uneventful, or maybe even mundane or dull. If so, it's time for you to do something about those thoughts. Before you start with your list of excuses, let me assure you that most people here have felt that way at one time or another. But don't give up on yourself. You deserve more than that. You're worth more than all those things. And now the part of the matter is most of our lives are ordinary. We follow certain routines. We get up, we eat, we sleep, we go to school, we go to church, we have special interests or hobbies, we dance do something on the second Tuesday of every month because thus and so group is moved or meeting or something like that. And uh, we all have our own routines and we all have our own schedules. And that's perfectly okay. There's nothing that says you can't do that. Um, the author, George Bernard Shaw, made the following statement. And he said, life isn't about finding yourself. Life is about creating yourself. Now, there's a difference there. And our minds at times have been taken over by Madison Avenue advertising with Words as sensational, fantastic, incredible, outstanding. What about ordinary things? Stop and think for a few moments. Let's observe what role the hand of God plays in our journey. This both uh, is a spiritual journey as well as our physical one. The creation of the world in seven days was his. Surely our God is powerful. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Son of God, traveled the lands that were once uh, ruled by um, David and Solomon. Uh, and he invited people of Israel to join him to become part of his kingdom, this is Jesus, and to find the rewards of an abundant life. Life is usually ordinary rather than fantastic or even sometimes painful. The people of Israel expected that Jesus would become their king and that Israel would be considered prosperous and free. But that didn't happen at that time. As fate intervened, it was Passover, and the crucifixion would soon take place. The hopes and plans of many crashed, and they felt pain, and they felt loss. With the resurrection of Christ, the disciples began their new journey for eternal life through their belief that God is eternal and that as found in Romans 6, uh, verse 23, but now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves to God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness and the result 
is eternal life, for the wages of sin is death, and the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. For our new journey, we must live the life that Jesus wants, and we must encourage others and invite others to do the same. Invite them to come to church on Sunday. If you don't think they're ready for a service, uh, invite them to come to some of the groups that are meeting. They're always looking for people at church groups, uh, at least the ones that I've been involved with. And you can always have a visitor and you don't know where that visitor is going to end up. And hopefully they'll be in the pew with you next week. Uh, but if you don't try, you'll never know. And the thing is that as we're doing all these things, we have to become more kind and generous, more loving and forgiving. Oh, I know so and so, but I'll never da, 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 da. you finish it off with whatever you want. We've all done it, but we have to stop. Uh, we have to be more trustful than doubtful. As we go along the life road, we encounter Jesus. And as God opens our eyes and our minds and our hearts, our journey will be more meaningful, not only to us, but also, of course, to those we encounter. And may this be our new journey and a happy new year to God be the glory forever and ever. Amen.